Hey everyone, welcome to the third edition of the FE Addicts podcast. I'm your host, Edward Hunter. I'm with Jack Giordamana, Joe Jones, and Matt Murphy, our special guest for this episode. So introduce yourself, guys, starting with Jack. Um, hi, everybody. Uh, you've already had me on the show for twice already. I'm from Formula E Zone, so yeah, thank you for having me on. Uh, Joe? Well, yeah, I'm, this is my second episode. Uh, last time we did a little kind of talk about some of the powertrains. Obviously, we know a lot more now, which is nice. And, uh, yeah, I enjoyed being part of this. And finally, uh, before I do it, uh, Matt? <laughs> Hi, I'm uh, Matt. I'm a massive Formula E fan and uh, a regular contributor to the Formula E Addicts page. Um, got into Formula E Addicts at the beginning of the season, and I'm loving it, so... Thanks to uh, Ed and Jack and everybody for including me on this podcast. Yeah, and I'm Ed. I'm head admin of the Formula E Addicts page and the um, host and uh, brainchild, I guess, of the podcast. Oh, well, along with uh, my right-hand man, Pico, who isn't with us today. He's on holiday in Malta. But we're very pleased. I know there's some bits of news that he predicted correctly um, yeah. from, right from the first edition that was announced since. So. Let's dive right into it. I want to talk about the big news that was announced just before and during testing. But the single biggest announcement that really sticks out is the signing of Jack Villeneuve to the Venturi team. came co- pretty much completely out of the blue. And uh, I think you know more about it, Jack, the sort of circumstances around which it happened and since the first private test that he did and how he, he, the, he got bitten the bug. He got bitten by the bug in Formula E and then he couldn't let it go and signed up. Yeah, definitely. He well, he has said that you know he wanted to be part of the sport from last year from watching it, but he admitted to me that when the when I spoke to him, luckily on on the first day of testing, that he said the visit that I had with Venturi was a friendly visit, like the team said. There was nothing more to it. I didn't expect anything to come from it. I just wanted to test the cars. He said, but then he once he tested the car, he was like, "Whoa, man! I really want to be part of this. It's you know, it's such a cool thing. I didn't really think how cool it was." And obviously with Heitfeld, as we all know now at Mahindra, so Venturi had a seat. Villeneuve has been friends with Gildo Pasto, the Venturi automobiles um, owner. So, you know, he already had good connections with the team. And Millionaire. The team had, yeah, the team had an empty seat and they said, Jack, do you want to have a seat? And he, he jumped at the chance. Yeah, that's important because a lot of uh, our first reaction, I guess, sort of when you saw when we saw that Villeneuve had been signed was that, because it happened first, we got the announcement first. We thought that Heidfeld had been pushed out, but obviously it wasn't. Um, it wasn't that Nick had already uh, pretty much made his decision to go to Mahindra alongside Bruno Senna, who's been kept on. Uh, do we think that Villeneuve signing is um, good for the championship? There seems to be a bit of a mixed reaction to that. Do you have any thoughts, Matt? Yeah, it's got its it's got its pros and cons. Um, firstly, when I first heard about Villeneuve, I thought it's just another old timer that's just trying to relive some uh, glory days just like you are truly but um, you know on the flip side it's a massive name to bring to the Formula E family um, and he seems really really competitive and he's really really up for it he's not there just to just to be a number he's actually there to win so it's going to be an absolutely great second season just to see what he's going to do but again I do have a bit of a mixed reaction to it but only time will tell I also think, like even uh, me, I, as I think I said in the last episode, I'm quite, quite a kind of noob to motorsport. Like Formula E is actually what got me into motorsport generally, the wider world of motorsport. And even for me, uh, like when I heard that Villeneuve had been signed, like he's he's still one of those big names of motorsport, whether you're a fan or not. Like Villeneuve, uh, even for me, who wasn't someone who's kind of really into F1, uh, you know back in the days or watching replays I, I think that name factor uh, as you mentioned is definitely going to be a, a a big plus for the series yeah it's been a big name ever since uh, the 1970s when Gilles Villeneuve his father made a career for himself for the older generation it does have that that impact as well although personally I think Villeneuve's pretty, Gilles Villeneuve and Jack are pretty cool as well though I, I wouldn't say I'm the biggest Jack Villeneuve fan but I I'm going to go in an open mind, and if he does well, then it's a good signing. If if he does badly and quits halfway through the season, which I doubt, he says he's in there for the full. He says he's not there to to go on holiday, and it made me. It did make me think of with Nail and I and that famous line about going on holiday by mistake. 
but I, it doesn't sound to me like he's there by mistake. It's a pr- pretty intentional move. So, so best of luck to him. What I think's interesting is that he's not here. He doesn't want to be here for one season. He hasn't, you know, he is thinking about the second season because he was asked an interesting question about the Montreal Heat Pre and he was talking about yeah. being there. Montreal isn't predicted to be on the calendar till season three. So with Montreal obviously being, you know, and he's it being in season three and Villeneuve then saying, look, I want to be there. So that means he's saying, look, I want to be here, not for just one year. I want to be here for two years. So, you know, or maybe even three. It depends how long he wants to go on for. But, you know, he's stated an, an intention of actually, like, being a proper driver in this championship. It's not just a one-season wonder. But he does need to prove himself, I think. Even though he may have, have the name and all, I think when it comes to Beijing and then the first few rounds, if 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 he is really competitive, then obviously it's it would be great for the Venture team to keep him on, or, or with another team even. But... um if if he is kind of just trailing at the back and he has lost his edge, I'm not saying that is going to be the case, but if that was the case, I, I don't think the Venturi team or any team are just going to keep someone on for namesake that people are going to want results at the end of the day. So if, if he is wanting to you know, keep it in season three, maybe it's an obvious point, but he is going to definitely have to perform in this season. Right, OK, let's move on then to uh, the man who... Villeneuve effectively, the seat he took, or the seat that Heidfeld vacated then, uh, and Heidfeld himself has moved to Mahindra alongside Bruno Senna, as we said earlier. Do we think, um, good move, bad move? Because Nick, Nick himself said in an interview, I think it was with Electric Autosport, if I remember correctly, he said something like um, that what was happening at Venturi wasn't happening fast enough, and Mahindra convinced me they had a better package, mm. for, at least for season two. Do you do you think that's um do you think he's right or do you think maybe he's uh, made a big mistake there? Well, I, I'm I'm not sure if the actual physical package at uh, Mahindra is going to be way better than Venturi's because they're both very similar. And all right, Mahindra claimed that they have five newton meters more torque than Venturi, but apart from that, they're actually very similar systems. Um, I think more also what he referred to, I think was the, the the way that the teams run. And if you remember from season one, all right, Nick did make mistakes himself. Uh, you know, he, he sometimes just pulled in a qualifying time and it just simply wasn't good enough. But also, I think of, as we discussed last week, all the races where he was leading from the front and then often because of teams' mistakes, uh, he was then pulled back and, you know, couldn't do well. It didn't just happen to him, it happened to Sarazan uh, famously mm. in the second race at London, of course, they told exactly. Sarazan. Exactly, and that's, and that's the Venturi. He had enough energy at the end. Top of things. And as a driver, I think maybe once, maybe twice, but it, he must have got sick of it by the end. And if Dilbert Gill and the team at Mahindra are saying, hey, look, we're also with Campos's help now, we're organised. I mean, look what it did for Nelson. Yeah, definitely. Uh, then we, we can do that for you too. So that that must be a lot more kind of confidence inspiring than Venturi, where maybe they're you know, just keeping on the same thing. They're like, oh, yeah, we, we're learning from mistakes, but actually not putting in place any radical changes to make sure that they don't do the same mistakes as they did throughout season one. With Heitfeld, uh, what's actually quite interesting, when I interviewed him, he said he didn't want to go into too much detail in why he'd move to Mahindra, but he said he thinks that, you know, Mahindra will have a better performance than, you know, and that's the main reason. He said, I feel like Mahindra will be quicker than Venturi this season. And so far from the first four days of testing, you could say that at the times, Mahindra do look a bit quicker. I don't know how much Venturi have pushed, but from Mahindra's 200 lap, 200 kilowatt lap, uh, they've managed to get into the mid-130s with Bruno Senna and Heitfeld. So they've looked pretty quick. So I think Mahindra have definitely made a step forward from last season. Because, you know, when he told me, at, uh, it was on day two, I believe, I, I interviewed him. And he said to me, I was like, really? You sure? Better performance from Mahindra where they were last year? And Venturi, you know, all that 15 years experience with electric, you know, automobiles. So I thought to myself, oh, that might be an interesting one. But so far, I think Mahindra have showed a very good start to pre-season testing. And uh, they could be slightly faster. It's still way too early to tell. But from testing so mm. far, they might be slightly ahead of Venturi. And I would also say perhaps they're more reliable too, considering that Venturi had a few problems, specifically in the first two test days. Yep. You're right. Anyway, uh, let's talk about uh, another man on the move now, and that would be John Eric Verne, who's moved from the Andretti team over to DS, Citroen DS Virgin, alongside Sam Bird, who they're going to keep, probably for probably for a good reason, considering he got two wins last season. Uh, 
So, um, s- seems like a, a good move for Jeb, considering what's happened to Andretti in testing so far, which we'll come into a little bit later. But um, do you think that do you think that this is going to be the right move for Jeb, especially if he's got such a strong teammate? It's obviously good for DS Virgin and Quint Stengler. They're going to reveal their livery tomorrow. It looks like there's definitely got a big announcement on Twitter tomorrow, which will be. By the time this goes out, I'm sure it'll be common knowledge. I'll put a picture of it and everything. But um, but yeah, um, d- what thoughts on the move? I think that Virgin next season's got the the strongest possible lineup on the grid. Myself, um, I'm not Vern's biggest fan, but he showed in that Andretti car at times last season, especially in the first London E Prix, that you know that he could overtake on a very small track. And it was quite fast. Um, a lot he did, of pole positions did have bad, as well. Yeah, yeah. He, he did have some bad luck on the way. Um, but Sam Bird as well. Um, I think, um, even though he had little mistakes here and there with, you know, um, staying out for an extra lap, um, he uh, is a quite a consistent driver. And I do think that he'll be up there in the, the driver's standings next season. He won't, I think DS Virgin will iron out all the mistakes from last season. And with them two drivers, I think that possibly they could uh, challenge for the team's title. Mm. The other interesting thing about John Eric Vern is that in some, I think an interview with Formula E Diary, he said specifically that hopefully in an ideal world, I'm going to miss two races this season, which is a bit of a weird thing to say and kind of, devaluing to the championship obviously he's referring to his potential maybe seat at Haas F1 because obviously he's still got the Ferrari test role we know Haas F1 have got big Ferrari links so Jorink Vern kind of kind of leading a double life here I, I'm well not not in the you know not saying he's having an affair or anything you know I mean I mean having a I mean he's he's got two different championships in mind and obviously if if push comes to shove, he wants to get back into F1. So um, do you think that that's um, wise of him? Do you think it's better to be at the back back of the grid driving for Hasset? Well, presumably the back of the grid driving for Hasset F1, the new team. Or do you think it's better to, to commit to the full season with Virgin, where he might be, you know, winning races, championing for the championship? I, th- I think if you're going to get a chance to drive a Formula 1 car again, you're going to jump at it. I think even any of us would make that same decision. Uh, Probably, yeah. <laughs> and so I don't blame him. I don't think I think Hass F one won't be at the back. I think they'll be ahead of the Man of Marouches and I think they could be challenging the Salbers and the maybe even the Toro Rossos on Force Indias of this world. Uh but that's another story. But I don't but you know, if you had a chance to jump into Formula One, he's definitely in the driving seat for that Hass F one drive. So if he's there's a chance, you know, go for it. Fair play. No, you know, I'm not going to stop him. Formula E is still a brand new series, you know, as much as we love it and we want it to be amazing, we have to admit, like, you know, if a driver, a good driver moving from Formula E to Formula 1 is a step up, not a step down. Yeah, so, Formula E isn't going to collapse without him. <laughs> yeah, with, you know, without, you know, John Eric Verne, it's like, you know, full marks, and he, he said, look, in an ideal world, I will only miss two races, because, you know, there's no clashes with the, you know, I don't think there's many clashes with the Formula E uh, calendar, but, you know, what he means by that is if, you know, has F1 allow him to go back. That's, you know, I, I sort of made this point uh, earlier in the week. I, you know, has F1 might not allow him to go back to Formula Formula E because of, you know, even though the cars are much slower, even though they're safe and so forth, you know, just have a chance of anything happening and then their driver's gone. So well, they don't want uh, to have Robert Kubica incident to happen where he gets injured and has to abandon that, his career. Exactly. With uh, but you know, obviously we saw Nico Hulkenberg going off to Le Mans, so it can be done. So in an ideal world, if Haas says, look, yeah, fine, drive for uh, Virgin e- Racing when you know you, there's no Formula 1, that's fine. Then he'll miss two races because obviously he's worked out that, you know, he he will miss two. But, you know, I, I can't really blame him. I think Jeff is still young and from the sound of it, even when he he joined Formula E quite early on, he said, you know, I'm still looking for a Formula One seat next year. And if that's not possible, then I then I think I might give up. So uh, I think he's still got a bit of um, it was one it, as as it said in one of the articles. He's got unfinished business still in F1. He still wants to prove himself. I think um, when when for uh, some other people like like for example Nelson Piquet, when his F1 career finished it's not like it didn't look like there was a kind of good chance of him getting back into it um 
when it didn't look like there was a good chance of him being banged to anything apart from NASCAR tracks at one mm. point. Well, yeah, yeah, it, it, it was it was a tough time, but that's that's a different story. Yeah, but as I'm I was not going to go into that. Yeah, with Jeff, it does seem like he, he F1 is still where his heart is for now. Um, though I think he, I do think he's enjoyed Formula E, but he he still wants to be at the pinnacle of motorsport. He's still at that time in his career where it it could do something for him. Yeah. So I guess you can I guess there's you can see it both ways but but it's I think it's fair to sympathize with Jeff. And also maybe you can sympath well I'm not sure how much we can sympathize with them because um of course they got the big sponsor signed up to them which is of course Amlin as predicted by Jack Pickering Pico. Uh, in the very first podcast I think he was the one who um said oh wouldn't it be cool if they did that and well they have done it and it, it is pretty cool although they bet and it is a bit confusing for people who have watched maybe a couple in season one, then switch off during the off season. They'll t- tune in in Beijing and they'll see the Amlin car and think, "Oh, that's a Guri, right?" Uh, no, a Guri's the other car. <laughs> uh, but, <laughs> of course, we we ourselves getting confused in the Amlin Guri, Amlin Andretti, but the Amlin Andretti is what it is now, and that's the only one Amlin team there is. So that that's not too confusing. They've announced one driver during testing a few days ago, and it is uh, the only female driver who's been given a full season contract, I believe, and that is Simona Di Silvestro. Uh, obviously, they've lost John Eric Vern, uh, putting Di Silvestro as the lead driver. Do you think that's a good move? She's a she hasn't got amazing results. To be back. A one podium in IndyCar, I believe, is um, the only thing that really stands out at, at the top level. But um, She's got a fair bit of experience. Do, do, you, do you think she was the right choice? Yeah, of course. Well, I knew she was signed four weeks ago, so I was very surprised. Yeah, I think everyone she... knew, but um, currently because spilled it, basically. It, the... it was announced with the Amlin and Dre thing, you know. It, wasn't... Yeah, it seems that formally it's sort of been... It was, it was, I was very shocked. I was like, yeah, we know. She knew. She was very happy to say that yeah. she was there even before this announcement, so I was very surprised. But anyway, we'll gloss over that. But yeah, why not? She's done good. I don't know if she has, you know, she had the best time of testing. But you know, she's an experienced driver. She's, you know, she's got a decent record behind her. She's not like she's done awfully like some female drivers. She's yeah. actually. I was just playing yeah. devil's advocate there. Yeah, I'm actually. She's, actually, actually, she's <laughs> actually like proved herself and can. She has, if anything, she has proved that a female can race alongside a man. So I think, and I think she'll have the chance once she gets to grips with the car, you know, if she gets the chance to get grips with the car before Beijing, then, you know, why not? I think she can be a real star in this championship. Any thoughts, guys? I totally agree with uh, Jack. I thought for a first out in Formula E at the end in London, I thought she did fantastic. Um, yeah, nearly she into the points. It did. Yeah, she uh, she did some great overtakes on Truly and also a teammate at the time, Vern. Vern yeah. um, and also highlighting, you know, the the potential of women in motorsport. Um, we haven't seen any decent, you know, lady drivers so far in Formula E, and hopefully, uh, Di Silvestro will break the mold. I think it's a very uh, exciting time for for women in motorsport and also for uh, new drivers in Formula E. Yeah, I I agree. I think she could definitely really, really prove herself. She has, in flashes, proven herself in uh, IndyCar for sure. Um, And I I think that Formula E is a really, really, really good opportunity for her to be up against a really good field. But also, if if Amelin Andretti get their car together, uh, also hopefully in a close field. So so anyway... um... We've had four days of testing too far, two more to go before everything gets packed up, and over September it's ferried off to Beijing. Uh, so we've got a pretty, uh, I wouldn't say the whole picture, but we've got a good picture of you know where everyone is at at the moment with only about two days to change it. So I don't think we're going to see any last-minute dramatic turnarounds in terms of performance. But the, obviously the headline times, of course, on the first two days, Edam's, uh, well, on the first day particularly I think it was Edams and Buemi who were setting the pace and sort of l- low 131s and stuff like that and then um, and then on the uh, second two days days three and four which have just passed we saw uh, the app team who were running only one car in testing uh, someone asked me about that I wasn't quite sure why they were doing that I believe it's 
I just thought it was their philosophy and maybe to save money or something. No, that's incorrect. They weren't running one car, they were running both cars. Oh it's yes, just, but one at a time. Just they one at a time. But if you think, look, if the if Team Aguri... Are they charging the other one? Yeah, while it's Team doing... Aguri did the same thing and they did the most laps of out of anybody. So it did have a good uh, philosophy to it. But anyway, uh, so Daniel Apt first um, broke a new lap record and then Lucas Degrassi on the day after when it was his turn broke it down even further, but getting into the uh, 1 minute 29 marks around Donington, the Formula E car. I'm not sure exactly um, what kind of pace that is, because uh, I'm not exactly sure what the... Um, is it uh, MSA Formula, who um, is basically what people are saying, is sort of the um, sort of uh, ordinary sort of uh, combustion engine car that is around a similar pace. So I'm not sure exactly what the la- lap record for an MSA Formula car, or Formula Ford rather, is around there. But uh, there's definitely a, a good achievement for um, for uh, for the app team certainly, and it puts them in a good stead because the Edams team seem like they're not too far behind. But uh, in a video that came out, I heard um, Nico Pross saying something along the lines of, "Oh, we're a little bit worried about reliability," and it could be that in these opening races, that's like the deciding factor in who wins all the races. Um. Yeah. That's true. Edams, I spoke to Nico Prost. Uh, yeah, they're worried. Those lap times by Edams have got their head scratching a little bit. Cause I, you mean well, by act? Yeah. Sorry, what did I say? You said by Edams, so they're confused about their uh, own lap time, sorry, according no, to you. <laughs> my mistake. Um, yeah, they they got their head scratching about how they swore apps times. Because they, well, Boemi teased uh, the app team by saying that they reckon that the Edams car can get into the 129s. But, so then, that force that sort of motivated the Audi Sport app team to go for it. I was like, okay, then, if they can do this, what can we do? <laughs> and But then, I spoke to Nico Pross, and it was like, you know, we're struggling with our qualifying pace. Our race pace isn't too bad, but they they don't understand why they can't get a quick 200 kilowatt lap. They're really confused. Um, so they said they've got a lot of work to do to understand what they have to do to get the 200 kilowatt performance out. Because at the moment, they're about a second off the pace in qualifying. Hmm. Do we yet know what the uh, failures were what, when uh, they was Nico it gear- Pross had a gearbox failure and Sebastian yeah. Bawemi had an electronic problem. And they also said they're having a few setup issues, although that may be specific to Donington. Although it is worrying when you think the Edams were pretty so dominant, particularly on the first two days and even last year at testing at Donington, that now suddenly the act of taking the initiative. So, well, so, well, this year's a completely new era in Formula One. Yeah. We have to like we had like our first season, which was a spec series, and now it's a new era, like how Formula One was two years ago. Completely all new powertrains. You don't know who's gonna get it right and who's gonna get it wrong. Teams that were quick last year and not so quick this year. So there's a lot of changes, and you know we have to expect that. I think with um, both uh, Appscheidt Audi Sport and with the Renault Edams team. Both have these massive manufacturing giants behind them, like you know, uh, Schaffler, uh, some you know, millions if not billions of uh, dollars uh, behind them. Uh, as same with Renault. So I think both teams, especially with Edams now uh, being a bit worried, are going to just really have to invest time um, with engineers figuring out the problems. I mean, all, all teams will for sure, but I think with, with their massive backing from Renault they're just going to have to invest lots of uh, man hours trying to f- fix these problems now. And especially, apparently, they're using a two-speed gearbox made by a French company called Sadev. Uh, so if there's problems there, they've only basically got a week now to get it fixed. Okay. We're going to move on to Next TV next, but do you have anything to, do you have anything to add about Edams and Apt and the rivalry between them, Matt? Um, I think it's just going to be a continuation from... Uh, from last season, really, both teams have done very well in testing, being quite close, obviously, up to Brook and the 130 barrier into the 129s. Um, I do think, again, it will be a standout driver from Renault and a standout driver from um, Apt, both going for the championship. Uh, you know, it will be Degrassi and Buemi. I'm not sure if um, Next TV can sort their you know, car out to, to match uh, those two big rivals. But, um, you know, there is two days of testing left. I don't think there's going to be any massive changes, as you've said before. Um, but uh, app do look good, and I really like the... the it's like an electric roar of the, the engine from the uh, 
the testing footage so I'm looking forward to that uh, as well and hearing that with my own ears rather than seeing it on a video it all does look exciting mm. yeah we haven't really talked too much about the sound I guess you were at Donington Jack uh, any uh, are there any um, before we move on to XTV were there any um, teams in particular that really stood out obviously at sounds like it was the loudest but I heard a lot of people talking about DS Virgin as well uh, DS Virgin you can't hear oh yeah you can't hear that one it's unbelievably quiet you don't even hear it coming around the corner that's how quiet it is um yeah apps is by far the loudest and it's actually quite a good sound um to be mm. fair venturi's powertrain both run by dragon and and venturi obviously that doesn't sound too bad mahindra's has a good sound to it they're all different they're all just a little like uh, how can you describe it uh, audi sport apps is like a very high pitch not squeal but like like how matt said a roar it's like woo, it's like properly loud <laughs> whereas mahindra <laughs> yeah, yeah no like, like, that's sort of like it's not like it's like, it's like, it's like a kid going line. down a slide like a, yeah, yeah it's like a <laughs> proper high pitch but you hear it and i tell you what i was with jack villeneuve and i have to tell you how loud these powertrains were and I, you know, which surprised me a little bit i was down by the crane of curves taking some photos and I could hear Jack Villeneuve was the only car out on track and I could hear him on the start finish straight coming all the way down before I got to where I was by the bridge where the bridge used to be if you if you remember Donington Park I was yeah. standing there and I could hear him on the start finish straight and that's you know for an electric car that's with eight decibel pressure of sound probably a bit more than that now I thought that's quite loud I can hear him yeah Interesting. I'm not sure if that'll be quite the acoustics will be quite so effective on street circuits as well because um, obviously you've got a lot more barriers in the way so it's sort of channeling the sound. But uh, I know at least at London, I did. I actually missed the start at the second London E-Pre. I was at ten thirteen, the other end of the track, and just talking to people. I didn't have the radio on, and I completely missed the start. I only knew the races start when they came round. <laughs> so, um, so yeah. What, hopefully, what maybe... I really, what I really hope is that. Um... Uh, the the, the uh, guys from Aurora Media do the same great job on uh, putting the microphone in the oh, yeah, somewhere in the powertrain or just behind it to not get wind noise but just get a really good uh, motor sound, which they did a great job with on season one. And I think it will be especially cool, you know, on TV where you see it kind of flip between two different cars and then you just hear the completely different noises between, for example, Apt's and Mahindra's. Um, I, I, I hope they do that well. Yeah, of course. Well, we have to hope that um, for terrestrial TV viewers in the UK, that ITV can sort out a contract soon because we have heard nothing about that so far. Although we still got the official Formula e live stream, so I guess lost. oh yeah, all is not lost. Anyway, we need to, we're going to talk about next TV, and now we have to. So um, the reigning world champs, obviously, with Nelson Piquet Jr., not looking quite as strong as last year. Uh, has to be said. Uh, we talked a little bit about the uh, was it the twin motor sort of uh, philosophy that they're carrying out, uh, having two drivers being used throughout the four days. Uh, obviously, PK being one of them, and Oliver Turvey being the other. Um, any thoughts on where the problems might be? Because I mean, they had to abandon the the, uh, for the second day, um, and they they shipped it back off to Germany, didn't they? I think they had software issues in the Monday yeah. Tuesday. They went away and they didn't really come back. But, interestingly, they're now saying that, you know, at the moment, from the the Monday and Tuesday session, they said there was no problems. We don't have any problems. They haven't run at 200 kilowatts. They haven't run anything near 200 kilowatts. They've yeah, that's at, evidenced by their times. They've been running at, 100, they've the been running at 150 and below 150. They haven't... Wow. They, they don't... You know, Nelson. I spoke to Nelson Piquet. It was sort of like the most weirdest like conversation I've had with him. Because he wasn't... He didn't look best pleased, to be fair. He looked kind of frustrated. <laughs> but then he said to... You know, he talked to him. I said, look, what's the issue? He said, oh, we don't have any issues. And at that time, he just stopped out on track... And Turvey had just stopped, but Turvey apparently they did a they did a battery check to like so basically they ran it on low charge and they wanted to see how far it would go before he stopped. Uh, so he said that wasn't a problem. He said his wasn't a problem. We just you know we just tried something out and it didn't work. Uh, but he said it's nothing to be too concerned about. It's just testing. We just test things. But he said you know this track is pointless for Formula E. It's nothing like it. We've done fifteen really sort of days in Spain, and we said we're coming here and we're just validating things. We have nothing to test. He said to me, which I thought it's, was oh, very... it's, is it just a show for the public then? According yeah, to yeah, it's just it's just he's just going he's just 
they're, they're just going out if you know to validate things. They're not doing many laps. But I think they realised they had a small issues. Turvey, Turvey was then the best person to speak to because I thought, well, I'm not getting much out of you, Nelson. <laughs> and uh, and I thought, well, I'll go and speak to Turvey. And Turvey sort of said the same. He says, yeah, we don't really have any issues. Yes, we're two days behind because we didn't do any running in the first two days of testing. But, you know, now we're starting and, you know, we haven't. He said, I don't think, he said, I've gone past 150 kilowatts in the car because you know we're not we're not we don't we're not chasing the time so it looks like as i said to him i said outside it looks like you have problems you're seven seconds off the pace he said yeah but you know we're not really focused on lap times so i'm I, I, i'm slightly i'm slightly uh hesitant at how how much they are telling the truth because if for example I, i'm not sure if this is true this is what i've been told by um this guy called stefan uh who who, who went to some of the tests but he said that in the media centre, when I think it was Nelson Piquet broke down first, that they were saying it was a gearbox problem, and that's why they sent the parts, the actual physical parts, back off to Germany, I guess to Rational Motion's headquarters, to check it out and say, wait a second, why, why did this fail? They're single-speed gearbox, this is. Um, so, I don't know, I, I, that's all, all, all I've been told, but I, I'm not entirely sure if... They're, they're worried. That's why Nelson Pico was saying in that interview, you know, we don't want to push the parts. So I think maybe they're slightly surprised that they've had all this testing, which they claim, you know, went all swimmingly in Spain. And uh, now all of a sudden it appears that they might be having some problems. Yeah, I do think next TV are putting a brave face on things. They have been really quiet, especially throughout social media and uh, the media itself, um, and it did take them quite a long time to actually, um, you know, tell the fans that, you know, the parts were being sent off back to Germany. So I do think there is issues for Next TV, and they don't really want to market that at the moment. Um, you know, I'm not, uh, a, you know, a big PK fan uh, or Next TV fan, but um, oh, you I can do be an actually quite. Oh, fan then. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Suppose, suppose, but. Um, um yeah i think you know they may be you know in the first couple of races you know maybe towards the back of the grid with you know the truly cars um and the aguri cars because i think it will take a bit of time for for next tv to try and catch up with the other teams yeah yeah i was about to say i mean if you thought um next tv were doing bad let's have a look at andretti and truly now and andretti i've got a couple of laps together so far, but running at nowhere near full power and having tons of software issues. Truly, haven't left the garage yet at all. Uh, well, okay, once on the first day they tried to and aborted that pretty quickly. But um, yeah, it's it's not easy to be um it's not easy to be a fan of those two teams, and it's not easy to be in those two teams at the moment with all the pressure on them. Obviously, it doesn't look good. Uh, do, do you think? Uh, there was a question asked on uh, the um, Facebook group a while back. Do you think um, at this point, do, should they persevere with the with the powertrains and th- try and get them ready for the first race? Or do you think maybe they should go the Team Aguri approach, put the old, last year's powertrain in and sort of ho- hope for the best? Well, I've been talking, well, I've been talking to a few people about this and I was hoping to try and get someone from Andre to tell me if they were going to, if they were considering going to, but they don't, they don't want to talk about it. Um, but I don't think they will go back, Andre. Maybe truly might, but to me it's an insult to, you know, Houston Mechtronics, to TE Connectivity, yeah. you know, to Matica for truly to say, look, yeah. you've given us this powertrain oh, but we're not going to use it because you're not competitive. Well, then, if I was TE Connective to Houston Mechtronics and Motomatica, well, I'll say, well, fine. Good luck next to Season 3 because we ain't going to help you because, you know, if you're not going to stick with us for the future like you wanted to, then and you're going to jump ship at us at the first sign of problems, then, you know, why would why would you stay around? I wouldn't stay around if it was my company. So, yeah. you know... But I don't think they'll do that, you know. I think, you know, if they do go for the Season 1 package, that's it. They're not allowed to go back to you know if they fix if yeah Houston, they can't do it if Houston season. Electronics if they fix it after Beijing and they found the solution that's it you know you can't put it back in the car if you decide to jump to the season one package that is it you can never go back to your package that you had last season. I think I, I think it's a it's a tricky one but to be honest there's nothing they 
I really, especially with Trilly, who did struggle even with the season one stuff last year. I don't think even then there's, they, 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 they would be able to score points because it's not like they've spent tons of time optimising their like season one has. package. Yeah. Um, like, yeah, like a Guri have. Trilly would be using their struggling season one powertrain. When even if, let's say, theoretically, they haven't got it right for Beijing, they haven't got it right for Malaysia, they've still then got a, a couple of months. And then, let's say, at last, at last, they get it fixed for, um, uh, like, Punta del Este, then they will be able to, well, they hope that they'll be th- hoping that they'll be able to score points then. But then there is something to gain. So, I don't know, I think maybe they're just going to have to brave it out. There's one thing I noticed, because... Um... After the first two test days, um, T Connectivity did a little bit of a Google Hangouts thing, which is basically like a Skype call, but anyone can sort of ask questions in text form. And I asked a couple of questions about the test, actually. I died right in, because I thought, why not? It was on the Wednesday after, I think. And uh, they were really open about this sort of thing. They said, oh, well, we're just having some software issues, but we we know it looks bad, but we think we have a fix. And they were, they were very open about it. I was really surprised. I thought they wouldn't answer it at all, but... Um, so yeah, I definitely think that um, it's not like T connectivity are just sort of pretending there's not a problem. They're, they're aware of it, and they, uh, yeah, they're, they're putting uh, Roger Giriffs and all the Andretti guys uh, working hard to sort it out. As are truly, of course, doing it a lot less publicly. I think so. They, they from, that, from that perspective, there is less embarrassment for Trilly, I think, because Jack, the, what do you think about Trilly? What have you heard about what they're they're doing? Nothing, because they haven't shown up. There's been no Trilly. There was no Trilly. You knew, you knew Trilly truck. wasn't. You knew Trilly wasn't there because there was no. There was no trucks or trucks vans really. Um, there's no trucks. There was no personnel. There's no nobody. There's literally. But they're not even in their 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 workshop. Their base. Oh yeah, but there's no one really you can talk to because there, there's mm. hardly. There's, it's very deserted at Trilly. It seems like there's you know. I do don't you think know they're going to come back for the final two days? Well, or do you think they won't bother? Well, they have to try. Yeah, they do. That, I don't think they're not going to say, oh, it's not what the we'll fans just, want to see. We'll, we'll just put the cars up. in the box on the 28th of of August and, and, and hope put, for them on, put them on the train to Beijing and we'll, we'll, and then, know, we'll and try they, again in Beijing. Both blow up on the grid, yeah, okay. Um, but I think yeah. they'll try, but yeah, they, no one's shown, they haven't shown up. I think they have similar... I just, it was, well, we have to remember, yeah, the Trulli team have not tested, they've not done any of the 15 days in season. The only testing they have neither have Andretti. I know testing. No, Andretti have had all that problem throughout the whole of the 15 day pro- days of testing. They have tested. Well, they haven't tested, but they yeah. used those 15 days, but they had the same problem in all of those 15 days that they've it's had. Andretti so definitely saw it come. So they have put the car out, technically. They have attempted to go testing, but they've had these problems throughout the whole of those 15 days and so far today. But truly haven't done any of that. They haven't, you know. So when that car went out and stopped in the in the pit lane when they went out on day one, uh, you know. So obviously there's some sort of software glitch. They haven't, you know, obviously because initial startup wasn't good enough because you know the software that they can tinker with hasn't actually, you know, the same problem that Andre ever had. You know, it's just not talking to one another. You know, the gearbox and the powertrain and everything around it, the hydraulic, everything. It's just, it's just they're not talking. You know. And Drake sort of got some positive signs at the end of day four. You know, they did a couple, of, you know, not back to back runs, but went into. They managed to get around four or five times in, back into the pits without actually stopping on track. Whereas they would get to the first corner or a couple of turns or at the exit turn one or by the Melbourne loop they'd stop and you just like. So by the end of the day, they actually did some laps without actually stopping, which you know was progress for the team. So yeah, I'm sure Simona a bit more encouraging after signing that contract with them, thinking, oh, am I going to be in the whole season of this? And then finally getting some running at the end must have been good for her morale a little bit, and for the team as well, because it's, yeah, been, it's been a bit harrowing for them. It's, it's been absolutely... I've been, I've been in that garage a lot through testing, and you can... You know, the first two days, it was like, okay, look, we'll find a solution. Like they said with the T connectivity, we'll find a solution. Then they didn't, and then they're like... I was watching them, they're all arms folded, like hoping and praying and I was listening and listening to all the failed startups and then once on the day four once they find with about half an hour left of the session they actually got it to fire up and the relief in the garage when it fired up and they could go through the gears it was like oh my god okay let's get this car out and 
you know, yes. it was a huge relief. Everyone was scratching their heads, phone calls constantly. Everyone's on the phone to people back in America to try and mm. find solutions. You know, they're working flat out, uh, Dre. I can't fault them. It's, you know, it's great to yeah. watch from an outsider just literally stand in the garage and watch them work and try and do their best to get this car out on track. But yeah, you know, they there were some really concerned faces at Andretti at some points during day three and day four. People were like, oh my God. I think they probably, though, even like in, in that Google Hangout, I think they were putting on a brave face. I'm not saying that then, I think they really are working hard from the sound of it, from what you're saying, Jack. And I, I think they probably will find the solutions eventually. But from my point of view, this is where their kind of lack of, lack of experience is showing. The last two testing days are going to be absolutely pivotal for both Andretti and Truly. Um, you know, Truly just, they have to turn up, they have to do some laps, they have to test before, um, you know, before Beijing. So I think Truly has put so much time, so much effort into, you know, his Formula E journey, his Formula E experience. And, you know, last year at times, the Truly team and, you know, Yarno himself sometimes were, were laughable. Um, especially, you know, overtaking um, the chicanes in Moscow as well. So a bit, yeah. I really, I really, really think that, um, you know, they are actually going to be giving all their efforts in these last two testing days because they have no other option. They have to. So, you know, fingers crossed that it does come, you know, just come off for both teams. If they did revert back to season one package, it would just be so much wasted money. Mm. on Technomatica's uh, side Technomatica. and on Trulli's own side. I'm sure he's investing his own money in this. Yeah, and it's a, it's not just this season as well. The season's beyond that they need to think about too. Anyway, mm. before I don't want to know too much about the woes that Andrelli and Trulli have gone on quite a bit anyway. But I think the final thing I really wanted to cover in testing was Team Aguri, who have had, mm, I th- think fair to say, they've been quietly kind of confident. Uh, they've been testing a lot of French drivers, coincidentally, for some reason. So Tom Dillman from GP2, Nicolas Lapierre from uh, World Endurance Championship, who used to drive for Toyota in LMP1, historically, and Nathaniel Berton, or Berton, or Berton, who was also GP2 driver. And the other big news about Team Guru is that um, I'm not sure when exactly, I know that Mark Preston has been tripped out to it, and Sakon Yamamoto is going to be driving. They're going to be doing a demo in Tokyo. So um, any thoughts on that, guys? I, I had a bit of news about Team Maguri's drivers from a secret source that I was going to carry on, but go on. Yeah, um, okay. oh, go on. No, 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 no. Uh, let, let's let Matt speak. We haven't heard much from him, sorry. <laughs> yeah, um, Team Maguri, I, I have seen on the internet today that, um, you know, they're planning to announce um, their two drivers for the season at the final test, luckily, which I'm going to, so... Hopefully, um, I'll be around the Aguri garage at that time. But, um, yeah, it's a, you know, at the moment, you know, you've got, you've got three, I'd say, equal, equal drivers vying for that seat. You've got Lapier, who had the most testing laps, and you've also had Berthan, who's actually, you know, the, the quickest out of the, the drivers that have tested... Although he tested later on, so maybe the car yeah. be quicker at that point. That's yeah. Issues um, out the way. And also, um, you know, will Salvador Duran, you know, go back to Team Aguri as well? Um, we just don't know. It's just a massive open book. You know, even and Yamamoto, he... probably throw his hat into the ring, so... We'll see uh, what happens. I don't think he really ingratiated himself too much in London. A- any news about... Uh, I know that um, uh, Duran was spotted outside Trillie's garage. Is there anything to read into that? I think Duran should be a shoe-in for the Team Aguri. I, I would be very, to be honest with you, I'd be shocked if he wasn't in the Team Aguri seat. I know he, he did well in testing. He tested in day one, and he had a solid day one test, to be fair. He wasn't like, you know... If you're looking at the times, I know Berton was quickest, but yes, you know, can't read too much into that. They've had three days of testing before he got in the car to learn about the car. But, you know, but Salvador Duran did a 132.5, I believe it was, which Lapierre did, uh, and Dillman was about two tenths quicker on the second day, and 
you know, and obviously Berton was about seven temps quicker, because, but they've obviously done a lot of testing by the time Berton got in the car. So I wouldn't be surprised if Salvador, and he's a known quantity to the team, he knows how the team works and operates, he knows the engineers, he's got that sort of, you know, engineering status with his, you know, with his the team because he's worked with those people. And I don't think he did bad, so I wouldn't, I'd be surprised if he wasn't in the team. But if he really wants to be in the championship, there is one seat still up for grabs, technically, and that's at Trulli. So if he doesn't get the seat, then, you know, if he wants to fish around at Trulli, then fair enough. Okay. Uh... Before we move on from Aguri, uh, there is the uh, well, uh, two things really. Uh, first off, do you think um, do you think the Tokyo demo is going to lead to a Grand Prix, uh, E-Prix there? Uh, I think so. Yeah. They well, really it's want... hugely popular in Japan. They so... really, they really, formally really want a Japanese E-Prix. I don't know how long. I think this could be a season four, season five thing. I don't think it's going to take a while to plan because you know, you're gonna if you're going to shut down Tokyo, you need to seriously plan it. And you need to do it properly as yeah, well. You don't want to, to do rush it. Properly. it. You can't mm-hmm. rush into these things. So I don't think we'll see it for a couple of seasons. But, you know, if this thing is successful, I think this is what it pins on. If this test is successful, people come out, flock out to see it. And, you know, pe- and it's all over Japanese papers and they love it and it's got rave reviews. Then I think the Tokyo government or, you know, people, local authorities in Tokyo, you know, will kick out. Might okay. pass a few bills, relax exactly. a few road racing laws, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, cool. let's let's do this then because people like it and it looks like it was a very good show and everyone really enjoyed it. I think so. If also, it's successful, uh, then sorry. yes, then we could we could be going to Japan. Also, I don't think you want to forget that you've got two massive manufacturers uh, in Japan. You've got Nissan, of course, who are a massive EV maker, and I believe Mitsubishi. I'm not sure are they Japanese, but they they they, they do. Uh, uh, well, the plug-in hybrid Outlander, which is the biggest selling PHEV in in, in Europe, I think. Um, so, if if in season five, for example, you could get those manufacturers in as well, that would just be amazing for the series. Yeah. I spoke Any- to Mark Preston uh, a couple of days, well, on, on the third day of testing, and I said to him, "So, what are you hold?" So, 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 I said, to, I just cheekily asked him. So, I said, "Are you? Did you stick with the season one package because you're waiting for a Japanese manufacturer for season three? And he said, "To be honest with you, he said he joked. He said, "No, that wasn't our intention." And obviously, I sort of knew that. But he said, "To be honest with you, for season three, I don't care who we have, <laughs> as long as we have a manufacturer by season three. I said, I don't care if it's Japanese or Indian or Jamaican. And he said, I don't care. <laughs> I said, as long as we have a manufacturer." Um, As you all know, Jamaica is a powerhouse of EVs. Uh, (laughs) So anyway, the gossip that I heard from Anonymous Source, they've asked me not to name them specifically. And also, they said, oh, forget some of what I've said, so I'll try and remember not to say that. I'll read out what what they've said to me. Gossip. I asked Aguri on Monday when their drivers would be announced, and she told me at the last minute. I said, what, as in October? She said it was looking that way. But then, of course, we go down to the same there next week, so I'm not sure how much leverage there is to the rest of it. She also told me, off record, that although at one stage it looked like De La Rosa was going to be signing, that was now unlikely. And, uh, yeah, I- I'm not sure. Personally, I think the livery that they've got, there, m- there must be a new sponsor or investor coming in, and I think... I'm not sure if it's anything to do with the French, French drivers they're hiring, but uh, it could be... Um, Someone, someone new that we don't know. There is, there is definitely a French sponsor Involved. in the air at Team Guri. There was quite a lot of people handing cards out to Mark Preston in terms of you know possible sponsors. So there was Aon, I think, was uh, was there, which you know, uh, which was quite interesting. Who handed a card to um, Preston while I was before I interviewed him. So I think there's definitely an, that's something to do with the French drivers why they're there. Um, in terms of those rumours, to be fair, you know. Mark told me that their new drivers had to be signed and had to be done next week. He said, no ifs or buts about it. It has to be sorted by next week. He wants them in the car next week, no ifs or buts. So whatever happens on Monday and Tuesday, if it's not the confirmed driver, then something has gone massively wrong. Because he's told me, look, he said, we our confirmed drivers will be in the car next week. So that's how long you have to wait. So. Right. Any other business that we want to talk about from testing... Dragon had a new livery, this sort of electric red thing that they've been showcasing, and they've kept their two drivers. I think Dragon look like they're in decent shape. Dragon look okay, yeah, they're they're happy. They think they're in the mix of uh, what's going on, and you know they don't think they're 
far away from how he's brought out. And so forth. So they hope they hopefully they think that they could. Be they seem a bit more best of the rest though at this yeah. stage. Uh, Virgin, Vir- Sam Bird told me that they think they're quicker than E Dams in race pace. He mm. said from you know from what they've seen and what they've seen E Dams done, they reckon you know they they can give E Dams a good run for their money in race trim. Uh, Mahindra have just been testing quite a few things, definitely with a sell up, trying to learn things with the tires, according to Senna. Because uh, that's where the teams, will, you know, if they can understand the performance of the tyres this year and, you know, understand how to generate the heat, get the grip from in the corners, get the setup so they obviously get the tyres to do what they want to do, then that will be the big gainer uh, this season. So there's a lot of emphasis on the tyres and that's what, you know, the Mahindra team have been trying to focus on. They haven't done, no team has done really any long full race runs. No team have gone for a half race distance in terms of, you know, go from a full car to a 0% car. No team have done that, um, from my understanding, because they've all done about 5, 6, 7 laps, and you can probably do about 12 laps at Donington. So they none of them have gone for a full race distance yet, which I found quite interesting. So anyway, I think time to move on. Uh, the last thing before we um, start to do our final little game and wrap up is where is round 5 going to take place? Uh According to Jack and Formula Isa, it's not going to be Mexico like they originally thought. Things have changed in between them, and uh, it's somewhere else that's already signed up, but they want to announce at a later date. We've heard a little bit about Lugano in Switzerland. They have a uh, proposed circuit. Uh, have you seen the video? It says Formula E truck instead of track, so I guess English was not their strong suit. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> yeah. And... Um, yeah, well, they, they, they're they going to make a truck, apparently. <laughs> and, uh, apparently, truly, for me, I'm not sure if this is what they've been doing instead of working on their powertrain, but they've been, uh, they've inputted some, they've, they've used some of, the, they've been involved in planning the layout, basically. So, um, so, so Lugano's got a bid. I'm not sure how exactly legitimate it is because of that spelling error. Uh, but once we talked a little bit about um, Tokyo and which you think is a bit more of a long-term thing. Uh, Canada, of course, because of Jack Villeneuve coming in. There are, there are a lot of potential candidates, and it's uh, difficult to pin one down at this point, I think. But Mexico seemed very clear earlier on, so it's very strange that it's been... Yeah, Mexico was clear, and it was... When I reported about it back in Berlin and uh, coming into Monaco, it was Mexico, I've been told. It was Mexico. But something's happened in negotiations, and it's fallen through. Um, that's they're focusing on the F1 Grand Prix instead. And, yeah, that's what some people are saying. I did sort of hint that, and, and you know, they, they people didn't give me from Formula, didn't give me a straight answer on it. They didn't want to say, but from you know what I gather is like things have changed very quickly from being Mexico to not being Mexico to being another place and it being confirmed. Um, I honestly with this Laguna thing, or Lugano, Lug- Laguna, Laguna <laughs> Seca. <laughs> yeah, that would be great actually, but it wouldn't quite fit with the street circuit. Yeah, thoughts. but you know, with the Swiss E Pro, I it can. It, I think it's a long shot. I don't think it's you know from what I believe and what's going on. I feel like it's an alternative, and it could happen in the future. Don't get me wrong. But I feel like it's the it was the last resort track. I don't think it's confirmed because otherwise. I don't think Formula E would have allowed them to do what they've done because by doing what they've done, then they would have just confirmed it. So mm. I think that could be done in the future. But cause, but the, thing, the only impl- implication was that the round five that was supposed to take taken on March 19th, wouldn't that race wouldn't happen on March 19th if that Swissy Pre became the location they'd move it into May uh, to keep it with the European section yeah. because it didn't make sense, sense to go in out. terms of travel as well yeah, it didn't make sense to go back to Europe and then back to thing for uh, South America yeah. for, uh, or alternatively they would be able to move Long Beach I don't know if that's viable but um, if they moved Long Beach back and then put in a a uh, a um, European E-Pri that, that, then it might be possible maybe but you know formerly said they had scope to move stuff around with the calendar so Hopefully, you know, but I, honestly, I don't know where well, I got to really dig to find out. But it's confirmed. That's the only thing that annoys me is that it's confirmed. People know it's done. The deal is done. We're just waiting for an announcement uh, until we find out. Yeah. Until someone from Formula E breaks down and, you know, tells somebody, then, you know, I don't think we're going to know until the announcement. Right. Yeah, with, uh, with round five, I, again, not like everybody else thought it was going to be Mexico, and especially when. 
the FIA released their provisional calendar in Mexico City. I was waiting for the announcement of, you know, the Mexico race, but so that never came to yeah, yeah. yeah. That never came to um, fruition. But round five, they say they've got somebody waiting. I remember, you know, the end of the first season when Montreal was being tipped for the first race of 2016. Mm. So that could be a bit of a, a bit of an outside bet. And where Lugano's concerned, I really think that they should put Lugano on the weekend where they were planning to have the London e Prix and then move the London e Prix back because then it gives the championship an extra race. Yeah. Well, will sort the calendar out totally. If I was going to go for a poor speculation bet, someone told me Brazil. And I thought, actually, with the, with the calendar being you know where it is in terms of America, I thought they don't want to go too far away from you know, moving things across and so forth. They don't want to go long distance to that swim when they, they still got Long Beach. So I thought moving down to Brazil, you know, might not be a... And that makes sense because we had the failed Rio yeah. 3 that was originally going to be in the Season 1 calendar. We have three Brazilian drivers all in sort of top teams. So. And Rio, if you have to remember, 2016 got a lot of sporting activities, World Cup, the Olympic Games. There's a lot mm. going on there. So maybe there could be something there to add to what yeah. could and, be a really um, big sporting year for Brazil. And if and you asked, we asked uh, Bruno Senna about it, and a couple of others. Degrassi, I think, was quite public about it. He said, "Well, he didn't. Know, he was really disappointed. He didn't know why it had fallen through, and he felt that there should be." Okay, uh, let's let's finish off now with our final item, which is a fun little game, which is guess who gets the empty seats. Basically, we have um, about one, two, three, four, five teams that have yet to decide some seats. So. Andretti haven't decided who's going with Di Silvestro. Edams haven't decided who any of their drivers will be. Well, maybe they've already decided, but they haven't announced. It definitely looks like it could be Bohemian and Pross. Is they the only ones who've been testing for them? Next EV, again, it looks like it probably is going to be Turvey. In fact, we've heard it. Motorsport.com pretty much already rumoured, rumour confirmed it. And... Um, the other two who haven't got trip firm dive driver, Tim McGuru, who already talked a little bit about there might be a sponsor involved there, and Trilly, uh, which is basically depending on whether Yano's going to abdicate or not um, and who he's going to put alongside. Might be Luizzi, by the sounds of things. But what do you guys think? Um, all right, then I'll go first. I'll try and name what I think will happen. Um, Am and Andrea have no clue, honest to God, but my dream is they'll stick to what they've done. They'll keep from the Andretti family. And a person I really want to see from the Andretti family drive, a Formula E car, is Ryan Hunter Ray. What? I thought you were going to say Justin Wilson. Yeah, I, <laughs> I really would love to see Ryan Hunter Ray in a Formula E car for some reason. Well, he's, he's American. Or would it, would it fit into his IndyCar program? Yeah, I don't because know, that's what. I would love to see him try and maybe do something. Because Marco Andretti was going to stay, and then his IndyCar program got in the way, so. Well, they managed to get the Sylvester out of the IndyCar system, so maybe they can... Well, she wasn't, She didn't have a full-time she, seat. Yeah, fair, fair play. Um, in yeah. terms of next EV, I think Oliver Turvey's a done deal. Um, sure. Uh, Team Aguri, for me, it'd be Duran and Lapierre. Yeah, I agree with that, actually. Um, well, but to be fair, Dillman did a good job. <laughs> it's hard to tell, but I think Lapierre. Yeah. But, uh, and for Truly, Truly is the only other one then. So Truly will be... I think Yano will stay because he won't get a driver. And I, I don't know about this Liuzzi thing. I haven't heard much about it to believe that Liuzzi is actually in the car. Mm, any thoughts, Matt? Um, any is anyone you it doesn't have to be a likely one. Anyone you'd just like to see in any of those seats? Well, first of all, for the Andretti seat, I'd love to see um, Scott Speed back. I thought okay. um, his introduction uh, at the Miami E Prix and you know his, his storm. Um, you know, up to second, I thought it was absolutely fantastic. And when I met him at the it's Monaco, he played in the pen. No disrespect, but it did yeah. seem like that was the only big result he had. But go on. Yeah, um, as well. Like when I spoke to him at the Monaco, he played. He was such a nice fella. And I don't know. He's. I don't know. I think as well. If you know, Formula E are trying to gain some, you know, gain some points in America. I think having you know an american driver will you know definitely help the competition so personally i'd like to see scott speed back at andretti i think um e dams it's a done deal for me and prost um truly again you know it's hashtag pray for truly isn't it <laughs> uh, because you, you've be just like, got to be like McLaren, believe in yeah, yeah. 
And going back to Team Agori, I do think it will be Duran. And I think partnering him, I think it will be Dillman. The only reason why I think it will be Dillman is because um, during the time that Dillman was testing for Team Agori, um, he was, you know, it was all over social media. He did a lot of media for the Agori team. He had a picture in front of him in front of the car as well, yeah. Yeah, and I think that out of the, the drivers that have tested for Agori, he's looked like he's wanted the seat more. And I think that may, you know, may impact Aguirre's decision. But, um, you know, everything's only speculation at the moment, apart from apart from the Edams team and the next EV lineup. I think. Um, there's there's also something uh, just before we finish that I read in a Autosport dot com, uh, like a premium article. So I thought I oh, might 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 as well mention that. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to run through the kind of configurations for all the teams of what Autosport thinks they're doing. So. At Scheifler, one motor with three gears. Uh, Andretti, one motor with four gears. Uh, DS Virgin. So they're saying that they are actually also doing a dual motor thing, like Next TV, with one gear, uh, which is interesting. Mahindra, we know, what one motor, four gears. Uh, Next Dev, two motors, one gear. And then Renault Edams, again, uh, surprisingly, but th- they're doing a dual motor thing with two gears. Uh, Team Magoo, what as we know, and truly no idea, and Venturi, as we know, one motor, four gears. Mm-hmm. So the thing, the thing that stands out to me is that all the people who are doing one gear or two gears are using dual motors, and apparently uh, uh, what this article claims is that that's to lower the centre of gravity, because if they have one motor, essentially what they have to do is they have to have a bigger motor in size, and what that would mean is that their centre of gravity would be higher. So from what it sounds like, they're, doing, they're getting two... Uh-huh smaller motors that then they can have lower down in the car and that means that the center of gravity doesn't get so high so i don't know if uh i if, thought if, was, if that is true i i saw someone i don't know how legit they are but they just said that it was to do with um uh something to do with torque in the motor that sort of if you've got because it works differently you don't need the gears necessarily depending on how the motor works i don't know sorry um, you can tell i'm not a technical guy because no, no, I, I don't know either, and I, I think that again that 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 will come into it, and cooling will come into it. But um, uh, yeah, I think we'll find out more later on. That's the beauty, though. We we don't know, do we? Uh, is is Jack Villeneuve going to win in his first E Prix in Beijing? We don't really know. But uh, I think that's it from us. We're gonna we're gonna. I think the next one, the next one where we're gonna get everyone in, or as many as, as are available, is definitely going to be. Uh, We'll do another one before Beijing. Hopefully there'll be a few more of these announcements. But for now, I think it's time to say goodbye. And uh, that's all that remains. And we'll see you uh, soon. Uh, next, uh, Of course, the next one will be the um, Battersea special issue, which I'm sure we're all very excited about, where we'll be hearing from Paul, from who is a supporter of the um, Save Battersea Park group. And we'll be hearing his opinions, my opinions, and Jack's opinions on the whole debate about whether Formula should be in Battersea Park and uh, should be very exciting. It'll be very professional and respectful, hopefully. Anyway, see ya.